regular church won't work anymore because the new Jesus movement has started. And I'm going to tell you why. I got to, I got to move fast. I don't want to talk too long tonight. Uh, and it's my fault. He said, did you go and see the Jesus Revolution movie, Mario? I told him, no, because I'm going to cry like a baby. I'm not going. I'm not going to embarrass myself in public because it's a movie to you, but I lived it. I had meals with Lonnie Frisbee. I had days where he was in his tent and I was at Melody Land. And we're talking about all, all the youth that are being saved and healed. Chuck Smith was always a very kind man to me. Always spoke very encouraging to me. Greg Laurie has been a kind man as well. Man that through the years has been a great encouragement to me. I saw God move in California. I saw Pirates Cove with 10,000 young people getting baptized in water. Well, let me tell you, quit wishing that's come. You need to change your mind because now is not the time. I'm going to tell you the moment we're in. I'm warning you of the moment we're in. We're in that moment when Chuck Smith sat in his kitchen with his wife and they realized that God had sent these barefoot, long-haired hippies and their church didn't like it. And then they said, you know what? We're going to have to go with God and love all these young people. And when they said yes, now listen to me. This is the night when we say yes. Yes. Come on over here. This is the night when we say yes. We say yes, Lord. Send those who have been perverted sexually. Send those who are addicted. Send those who are angry, gangster, forgotten. Send those who are atheists. Send them all. And let the lukewarm in the church be warned. We love you, but we are not going to choose you above the revival of the Holy Spirit. the golden age in Los Angeles. Catherine Kuhlman was at the shrine every month. David Wilkerson was at Melody Land every month. Chuck was exploding in the, at Calvary Chapel. Christian television was being born. Youth with a Mission was being started. We're there. We had one fault in our movement, and I think it shortened our life. We were obsessed with the rapture. We started to believe that at any moment Jesus could come, and I truly believe that that, that urgency is right. We have to be urgent about the coming of Christ. But we had no long-range plan to change the culture. We had no, no blueprint. We weren't even asking God, how do we go from baptismal services on the beach and Christian concerts to a fundamental change in what Americans believe their nation is? So we need to look a little bit at Charles Finney for that. Because in, in Finney's day, half of the attorneys in the state of New York were born again. 50%. We need to see a miracle in Boulder, Colorado. We need a miracle on the university campus. We need to understand that what God wants us to do is believe in miracles so strongly that we'll say, welcome the medical community. I remember watching Ms. Kuhlman. She had an entire row of surgeons, doctors, heart specialists sitting on the front row because they loved miracles and they dealt with sickness so much. I don't want the youth that are in this room to get a partial cure, a half strategy. I don't want to go 
down on record of being one more flare up, misfire. I want this to be the time that we not only said yes to God, but we then just started to have church and say, Mario's Tent Crusade, that's great. We're going to have a great crusade, but I'll tell you what, it's going to be in our church forever after the end of that crusade. It's going to be in our congregation. The man of God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So to finish this, Jacob wanted a miracle. The Bible says he was left alone. You know, I, I now believe that the number one emotional disorder in America is loneliness. And it says that Jacob was left alone and suddenly God appeared and he began to wrestle with God. I want to tell you the courage it takes to grab God. Because you've already decided, I'm going to die. You know, I'm going to die, but what a way to go. You know, that is the true OG. But he was so desperate. So desperate. That he grabbed God. That's what I want you to do. You know, I just think church is too polite. He began to grab God and yell at God. Bless me, bless me. You've got to bless me. Some of you are, are sick, but you're too polite in asking God to heal you. You, wanna, you think that we're going to be embarrassed if all of a sudden you begin to cry out to the Lord. Right here, Lord. Right here, Lord. Right here. Pasadena, California. John Davis, county sheriff, Orange County, was in a car that got hit by a, a, a drunk and he was thrown and his head hit all four quarters of the patrol car. And after his bones healed, he was mentally lost, had to be institutionalized because of rage. The doctors gave him such a high dosage of of medication to keep him from having seizures and violent outbursts. And his wife stayed true to her husband, prayed for him every day, a Christian woman. Finally, she said, my husband is dying. She visited him one day, said, my husband is dying. You got to let him come home. And they said, he'll kill you. She said, I'd rather that he died at home. I just want my husband at home. She brought him home and he, t he told her, I'm going to sleep in a separate bedroom. I stole my service revolver. It's under my pillow. One night you're going to hear a gunshot and understand I'm gone because I can't live like this anymore. One night she asked him what he would like for dinner and he ripped the kitchen door off the hinges just from trying to answer the question. God protected her. He started to watch TBN. And one night he's sitting there and he's looking at TBN, Paul and Jan, I'm a guest on the show, and we're having a healing rally at the Pasadena Civic Auditorium. We'd like to invite everyone to come. As sober as a judge, he looks at his wife and said, I'm supposed to go to that meeting. So he arrives and he sits up in the balcony. I begin to call out a healing over here. He jumps up and runs across the auditorium. Yeah. Then I call a healing down here. He runs down the stairs and he's over here like He's following me all around, and in the dark light, I can't see this man who is flitting across every part of the auditorium, trying to get under the anointing. So he finally sits back down 
next to his wife and says, honey, Jesus is just going to have to find me. It was at 9 p.m. that he said, I felt a breeze go through my head and I knew I was normal. And he came on the stage and he said, I have been healed. I've been healed of a, a severe mental physiological disorder. I've been healed. You could have filled a lawn bag with the pills he had to take every day. Three days he went without him. Three days. Goes to his doctor. Doc, I haven't had one pill in three days. The doctor said, give me security. <laughs> Literally, he said, give me security. They came in, he said, Doc, you don't understand. I've been sleeping like a baby. I've been eating normal. I haven't had a single seizure. I haven't had one attack at all. 27 more days comes back. A month later, he's standing on the stage of the Pasadena Civic in our next rally. And he's saying, my brain is totally normal. Give God the glory. Give God the glory.